I'm now going to demonstrate the setup for a demonstration. You'll notice once you've loaded the two parts of the software that come with the board. The new icons that you will see, first of all, will be this white palette with a red pen pointing to it, which is known as the Clever Driver. The second icon that you'll notice is the Lynx 4 icon, which is the operating software. But what we're going to do is set up for the demonstration, and you would go through this process normally without the projector projecting an image onto the board. You would set everything up from the computer, and you would set the system up, first of all, to demonstrate ink capture mode. So I'm now going to go through that procedure. Now I'm going to reach for my interactive tools, which are housed in the right-hand end capsule. I need my interactive pen, one of the ink capture pens, and also the electronic eraser. When using the ink capture pack, which is an optional accessory for the Cleverboard 3, you will receive as a basic pack two sleeves, one digital eraser, and four different coloured end caps. The colour of the ink that comes up on your computer screen is determined by the colour of the end cap placed in the sleeve. Thus, if I've got a black cap in a sleeve, such as that, when I'm writing on screen, black ink will appear on the computer screen. If I replace the black cap, say, with a red cap and write on the screen, then red ink will appear on the computer screen. You have to be a little bit careful with this because I could still have my black pen inserted into the sleeve, so black is coming up on the board, but red is coming up on the computer screen. So it's just a small point, but it's something to be borne in mind. And the four colour caps that you get as part of the kit are black, green, blue and red. First of all, you need to check that your batteries in these units are alive and fresh. The battery in the interactive pen is housed under this cover at the end and is an AA battery. And you know that the system is live because when you depress the nib of the pen close to your ear, you should hear a high-pitched buzzing sound. This is put there purely to let you know that the battery is alive in the pen. The second piece of equipment that we're looking at here is the ink capture sleeve. There's another battery, small battery, housed under the end capsule here. And to load the pen up, we first of all place our battery in the end of the pen, open the pen up here, and insert a normal dry white board marker pen. That's now ready to go. Similarly, the electronic eraser here has a AAA battery housed beneath the cover. And again, by pressing the small eraser mode here, or the large eraser surface here, we should be able to hear that high-pitched buzzing sound. The, the equipment is now set up to go ready into ink capture mode. I'm now going to go over to my PC and show you how we reach that position. So first of all, we come to the laptop. Now bear in mind that under normal circumstances, when we're demonstrating the ink capture mode, you wouldn't actually have the projector running at this point. But we are having the projector running today, so we can duplicate the image so you can see exactly what's going on. But normally this procedure would all be carried out at the laptop. The first thing that we do is bring the cursor and hover it over the Clever Driver icon. We then do a right mouse click and scroll up to settings. You must make sure that the word interactive is highlighted. And what you want to do before you hit the calibrate button is just check that you've got a little tick in this use previous calibration box. This enables you then to toggle between ink capture mode and interactive mode as you wish. And we simply click on the calibrate button there and it produces for us a white screen with a red circle and a cross on it. We then take our interactive pen and move to the board. We must ensure that this left hand capsule is now in the open position because as this is the receiver the transmitted signal needs to reach the receiver and if the door is closed the system will not work. We're going to go through what's called the calibration process now. And the way that this is done is you lightly hold the pen in the dimples between your thumb and your forefinger. 
and you simply come to the board and I always place three fingers on the board and roll the pen over and what you want to be doing is pressing directly in the middle of the cross. Once one cross is selected and clicked, the cross moves to a position. There are nine crosses in total that have to have the pen depressed upon them. Once the ninth cross has been depressed, simply come back to this screen and press OK. We next need to do a quick check to make sure that the board is calibrated accurately. And what you're looking for, and I normally bring the pen up to the four corners, is that the cursor drops completely under the nib of the pen. I'm now accurate, accurately calibrated. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to my Lynx software. I'm going to double click on my Lynx icon and I'm going to set the system into ink capture mode. The software opens and the first thing that you're presented with is a palette. We simply now go with our interactive pen to tools, we select ink capture mode, we allow the system to change into ink capture mode. We can then come back to the computer and set the system into full screen mode. We now place our interactive pen down, take the remote control from the projector and blank the screen. We're now set up with all our equipment tested and checked. We're now ready to operate the second function of the board, the first function being a normal dry white board. The second function was now ready to go, which is the ink capture facility. So we're now set up. Our system is ready to go in ink capture mode. And this would be the normal start point of your demonstration. All this preparation would have been done in advance. Now would be the time to invite your audience in. You're all set up, ready to go. So we would actually from this point be backtracking to the portion that I demonstrated earlier, which was talking about the surface of the board the hitting of the board with the hammer, the writing on the board with the permanent pen and also the dry whiteboard part marker pen, the talk about the warranty situation, the lifetime on the surface of the board, five years on the um, end capsules and we always talk about this board as being a distinct three function board. The first function is of course that it can be used purely as a dry whiteboard. I'm now going to demonstrate ink capture mode. I simply approach the board ensuring that my left hand end capsule door is open and I come with my pen already set up and I simply start to write. Everything that I'm drawing with real ink on screen is also being duplicated now on my computer screen. If I make a mistake I can come to my electronic eraser, simply approach the board once again and I can rub out my work, quite simply. So this enables me now to operate the board even if I don't have a projector available to me. I can simply use the board as a copy device. So what I'm going to do now is demonstrate how we make new pages. So once again, I'll write one on the board. When you approach the board, on the inside of the door, you'll notice that there are some rubber buttons, four in total. The top rubber button, when depressed, produces a new page. So that would be page two, new page, page three, new page, etc., etc. The second button down produces a copy of an existing page. So if I had some work on screen, for example, one plus one, I might want one sheet with that work on it. I produce a copy of that page and then put the answer. I've now created two slides, one with the question, one with the question and the answer. The third button down would send all my work off to a printer if my computer was connected to a printer. And the fourth small rubber button in the row sends the system out of ink capture mode and transfers it back into interactive mode. We've now finished the part of the demonstration concerned with ink capture. We move on now to demonstrate full interactive mode. So the first thing that we do, because we've blanked the screen, we now need to unblank with the remote control from the projector and we come over now to our interactive pen. 
we come to the board and we depress the bottom button which changes the system from ink capture mode and returns it into interactive mode. So when I now come with my interactive pen and press it on the screen, lo and behold, the cursor drops nicely under the nib of the pen. Just before we finish this section and talk about the software in more detail, I'd just like to highlight the fact that we have two rubber buttons on the pen itself. If you bring the pen in close proximity to the board and hold the first or the nearest rubber button, it actually hovers the cursor on screen, so you don't physically have to drag the pen across the screen to reposition the cursor. The rear button, when depressed, simulates a right mouse click. So effectively what we have now, a depression of the pen on screen simulates a left mouse click. We can hover the cursor by depressing the forward button and we can simulate a right mouse click by depressing the rear button. As you can see, I've now created a series of slides in ink capture mode. We've brought back projected mode, we've turned the system into interactive mode. We're now going to look at the Lynx operating software in more detail, covering each of the buttons and the function that lies behind it.